Jesus actually said one of the attributes of redemption is that songs of praise will go to God from a sanctified people. Oh, you know, some of the best voices on earth. Voices like, voices like Beyonce's voice. Fantastic voice. And some of them sang very nice songs. But those are not praise songs. I believe I can fly. There's no verse for that in the Bible. So that cannot be praise and worship. Oh, you know in some churches they sing it as praise and worship. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Is it the sky? You know some of those Celine Dion songs. They're very nice but they are not praise and worship. You can sing them in the church. They are not praise to God. Because they are not coming from the heart. They are not coming from the spirit. They are not spirit broad songs. Michael Jackson the best entertainer that I, I you know in my estimation his songs are not brought by the spirit they are mere entertainments songs that glorify God are not entertainment songs they are ministry songs they are not songs to entertain they are songs of worship and praise and ministry unto God and they come from the heart and they become the offering of our lips to God there are songs that are, don't even, you know, they are not supposed to be sung unto God. Songs that have no specifics. Songs that have no definition. Songs that have no de definition. He lives in you. He lives in you. Satan can live in you. Anything can live in you. Those, the songs of, of worship and praise to God are specific sensitive. They are lyrics that nobody else can be substituted in them. Only him specifically and deliberately attributed to him and him alone. And people say, well, I just want to sing songs that are a bit secular so that it won't be too churchy. Once it's not too churchy, it's not to God. Once you avoid putting Jesus, you, are, you avoid putting his blood, you avoid putting his sacrifice, you avoid putting his death, his burial, his resurrection, his exaltation, how that he is Lord of all. Once you remove those things, it's no more a song of praise to God. It's an entertainment for the flesh. Anybody can be used. Anybody can enter. Winner, oh, winner. Winner, oh, oh, oh winner. Abel, you don't win. Yeah. I say you go win again, oh, win. Uh, you can put anybody there. Buhari, you have won again, oh. Babangida, you have won again, oh. Anybody can enter that song. That song is not to God. Songs that are sung to Jesus, nobody else can fit in. That's why they must have things like, you died for me. Because nobody else died for you. You were buried for me. Nobody else was buried for you. And this is the big one. You rose from the dead for me. Nobody else rose from the dead. Those are the songs of Zion. Your blood was shed for me. Nobody else shed his blood for you. You forgive me my sins. You wrote my name in the book of life. You made me your righteousness. You made me your holiness. You made me your temple. You live on my inside. Those are songs of Zion. Those are songs of praise unto God. I don't know if I'm talking here. But once the songs have no definition, they are just open. They are not to God because anybody can fit in there. So praise is actually worship to God. And it's a spiritual thing. It must come from the spirit of a born again man. Praise must come from the spirit of a born again man. We are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit. And have no confidence in the flesh. But rejoice in God our savior. It must come from my spirit or from the spirit of one that is born again. Praise is a spiritual thing. We need our music theme to be filled with the spirit. Not just nice voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it's beyond that too. We're talking about spirit filled worship. Worship that brings ministry. Ephesians 5.18 and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. Somebody shout very loud in this building. Let every devil hear you clearly. I am filled with the spirit. I didn't hear a good amen. Speaking. Now look at the next verse. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. There are songs we sing that are not by the gifts of the Spirit. But when it comes by utterance, it always comes spontaneously at the spur of the moment. It's not something you planned. As you just begin to worship God in tongues, suddenly it bursts forth. You see yourself beginning to, 
to put music and melody to words. You begin to speak words by the spirit and you give them melody. You give them music. And every child of God ought to have that flowing all the time. And the songs can come to you deliberately once you're filled by the spirit. Colossians 3.16, past voices, listen carefully. Colossians 3.16 is talking about singing now. Look at the word teaching and admonishing one another. That means music team, your song should teach. That's Cologne. Teaching. Explanation. It means to instruct. Songs that instruct. Songs that educate. In other words, singing by the Holy Ghost will bring information that will educate and instruct. The word admonish means to give you counsel. Admonish. To give counsel. is often used by counselors. Admonish. To give you counsel. A singer should teach from songs. A singer should sing songs that teach. Songs that instruct. Songs that educate. Not just bra bra. Below, 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 below. And see what the Lord can do. Bending low well. See below. Everybody will start bending low. Too much play. Raise your wiper. Raise your wiper. God is sweating. Too much play. The word admonish means to give counsel. It means to put you in remembrance of something. It's used to instruct people to avoid danger. Admonition to avoid danger. So it means when people sing in tongues and interpret, it brings a counsel to us that helps us avoid danger. So when people pray in tongues and sing in tongues and interpret, they bring counsel that helps people avoid danger. Like this song that I started singing, I mean, I, 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 I looked at it on my way. I've been, it's been playing in my heart since yesterday. The lyrics are instructive. The lyrics are informational. The lyrics are educative. Who am I that the highest king will welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Who the son sets free is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Free at last. He has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died. It's instructive. It's information. It's not just an empty line of words. Below, 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 below. And the drama will hit. You're not even hearing anything. And everybody's below, 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 below. What are you doing? You're playing. There's no information, no admonition, no instruction, nothing. Just tiredness and emptiness. Like those things we used to know about children. Enter one, enter, bello. <laughs> Everybody will sweat and sit down as if they beat them. Why won't you be beaten? There's no edification. Colossians 128. Whoever wrote bello will never smile with me. <laughs> will never smile with me in this life. Who cares? What will I use your smile for? Eat your smile. <laughs> Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect where? In Christ Jesus. Used for maturity. Choir, if they sing more in the spirit, they will bring us into maturity by the gifts of the spirit. If you sing more in the spirit, you bring us to maturity. And it will come by practice. Everybody. Not just the choir, everybody in the house. All pray, pray, sing in the spirit. So you don't need to spend time listening to Don Jazzy or Two-Face to bless the church. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, word. When you are rich, when you are full of the word, lyrics will come out. They will come out by the spirit. You just, just be flowing out. When you are full of the word, the thing will be coming out. There are some songs when you sing them, they never lose viscosity. Those songs never lose viscosity. Every time you sing them, they are thick. Every time because they are Holy Ghost inspired songs. Ages come, ages go, they remain potent. In Christ alone. That's right. Those, those you, you know, songs that come by the Spirit, they outlive time. Because com songs that come by the Spirit are eternal. So they outlive time. They never wear out. The lyrics never grow old. I have heard of a land in a far away strand. It's a beautiful home of the soul. It was good as at that time, but not now. It has expired in the light of illumination. When light shines, can do light, 
loses relevance. When floodlight comes, where Kandu used to be the champion, Kandu becomes useless. That's what's happening. There's floodlight coming to the body of Christ by the revelation of the Holy Ghost. And it is exposing things that used to be relevant and making them irrelevant. Because when the best comes, then that which is good gives way. Say, I sing in the spirit. I sing with my understanding. I pray in the spirit. I pray with my understanding. Somebody say, but I'm not a musician. You don't have to be a musician. Making melody in your heart. Not on keyboard. In your heart. Making melody in your heart. You don't need music. Make the music. The music is being produced in your heart. You sing in the spirit. How do you sing in the spirit? You give melody to your tongues. How do you sing in the spirit? You give melody to what? Instead of lekota ben tequila nama, you go langron to corondo zekelena. And as you are doing that, understanding is available. You interpret it. Say, I hear you. Say, I will sing in the spirit. I will sing with my understanding. And say, in my interpretation of my song will come teaching, instruction, admonition, edification deliverance from danger all that comes in the interpretation all that comes in the interpretation the holy ghost inspires you to bring sound counsel through singing he inspires you to bring warning he inspires you to bring information so believers are matured let the word of christ dwell in you richly in fact that word admonish is used more to instruct to correct and to warn God wants our praise and worship sessions to guide our Christian lives. As they glorify him and lift him up. He wants our songs to correct, to warn, to guide, to instruct. When you're full of the word, it's very easy for you to sing spiritual songs. Songs are not meant to entertain. Songs are meant to edify. Songs are not meant to entertain. Songs are meant to edify. They edify us, they warn us, they bring us counsel. They bring us counsel. So I sing in the spirit. And I sing with my understanding. Just like I pray in the spirit. I pray with my understanding. It's, it's straightforward. Just like I pray in the spirit. And I pray with my understanding also. And as a child of God, you don't lack the ability to do all of this. The ability is within you the day you got born again. All you've got to do is just stand up this night and just do it. 